Hi, my name is Karthik Mayapin, and today I'll be presenting on the infectivity of a bacteria called Agrobacterium tumefaciens over a temperature range. My advisor for the investigation was Mr. Philip Allen. Agrobacterium tumefaciens is a very common bacteria that you might find on your backyard or even on your skin. It comes in this very standard cylindrical shape. But, when it infects plants, it has very unique effects. It's called ground gall disease, and it, it takes the form of tumors that come up on the surface of plants. And the way the bacteria infects the plants is often through the roots or on the stem, wherever there is an injury or an opening in the bark of the plant. And Agrobacterium, as I said, is very prevalent. In fact, it's considered prevalent in 44 out of the 50 U.S. states. So, n regardless of where you are, you can find Agrobacterium. Now, what is this investigation really about? One key word that I've used here is infectivity. And I'm going to measure the infectivity of bacteria based on the surface area that this bacteria's tumors affect on the plant. Additionally, I say that's based on a temperature range. This means that the plants that I'm going to infect with this bacteria will be placed into different temperature-controlled environments. Additionally, you also might be wondering why this is important. Why Agrobacterium tumefaciens? It actually has a large effect on the farming productivity, and anything that we can do to mitigate the effects of agrobacterium and crown gall disease on the plants will be of a huge benefit to the agriculture industry. Additionally, agrobacterium has other uses, especially in the field of scientific research and genetic manipulation, because this bacteria is very unique in the way it infects plants. It, in fact, acts like a virus because it uses part of its genome to insert into the plant cell's genome in order for the plant to have the correct instructions to produce the food that the agrobacterium uses. Also, I have a hypothesis that the infectivity will be placed uh, over a temperature on a bell-shaped curve. What this means is that infectivity will be very high in a certain range, and outside of this range it will start to wane off very quickly. I expect this because this is how most bacteria's infectivity change. Uh, is measured, and this is very common. I had several challenges in the course of this investigation. First, I had to find the right plant. It had to be fast-growing and easy to infect. And first I tried potatoes, but the potatoes were too easy to infect. They started molding. And then I moved on to mint, because I had some success with growing mint in my backyard. But unfortunately, mint doesn't grow too well in the middle of winter. And it's very hard to infect because of its thick stem. Finally, I settled on radishes because they grew from sprouts in just a couple days, and then they had very tender stems, making them very easy to infect. Additionally, I had to obtain the bacteria because it was potentially harmful. I had to go through the government, and this was a huge hassle because the government didn't exactly want to let a high schooler play around with infectious bacteria. Also, controlling the environment was hard because I didn't have top-of-the-line incubators, so. I just had to tinker around with them for a bit before I was able to make them settle on a temperature. Then I had to prepare for an inoculation, which is just a fancy way of saying infecting the plants. First I had to grow the radish sprouts and then uh, plant them in, in planters. And then I had to infect the petri dishes, which I had prepared with nutrient auger with the agrobacterium that came in a test tube in order to produce enough to use in the experiment. Then I had to infect the plants by using the scalpel to scrape away parts of the stem and then using an infecting needle in order to infect inoculate the plants. Finally, I had some results. As we can see here, at 20 and 25 degrees, the plants had enormous tumor growth. One key difference between the 20 and the 25 degree Celsius plants was that at 20 degrees, we had large tumors, but not that many of them. At 25 degrees, we had a lot of small tumors, and this aggregate proved to be greater in the long run than the 20 degree Celsius plants' tumors. And then, at about equal rates, we have 10 degree Celsius and 30 degree Celsius plants at about 0.5 millimeter squared total of tumors. They both had very small tumors, and at 35 degrees Celsius we had no tumors, and we'll see why in a second. And here, 
we have a different representation of the results. I use this representation in order to better show the bell-shaped curve. And we can see that the maximum amount of tumor growth occurred at the 20 and 25 degree Celsius range. It's very clear here, and you have a general bell-shaped curve. Now, this was confirmed by two other studies which I found on the similar experiments. And although they used different indicators, different plants, and different inoculation methods, it was still a very consistent high range at the 20 to 25 degree Celsius range. And so I believe that these uh, these experiments help to confirm my results. Finally, here are some pictorial results to help you visualize what the tumors are really like. Now at 10 degrees, we can see a small white film, which is in fact the tumor. At 30 degrees, we have minimal tumor growth in the form of very small white dots. So these are in fact the tumors that you see around here. At 35, we have very striking results that the plants were not able to grow. And so, because the bacteria depends on the plants for its nutrient and food, it was also not able to produce tumors. And here, these two are the real winners of the experiment. At 20 degrees Celsius, we can see a very large tumor on the side of this plant stem. And keep in mind that this stem is actually much larger than any of the others. This is almost a full centimeter in diameter. At 25, we can see many small white dots, and these are similar to the white dots that you saw on the 30 degree Celsius plant, except there are many more of them. And so this makes it apparent that the 25 degree Celsius plant had more tumor growth. Finally, we have comparison between the 20 degree Celsius plant and the 35 degree Celsius plant. And you can see the plants at 20 degrees Celsius had much more growth. They are huge leafy plants compared to the absolutely withered and dead uh, plants that you see at 35 degrees Celsius. These are some of my work cited, and I want to thank you for listening to my presentation on the infectivity of Agrobacterium tumefaciens over a temperature range. I hope you learned something today and enjoyed this presentation. Bye!